we are discussing the notion of dual basis okay let me start with an example example where uh, I show how a dual basis corresponding to a basis of R3 could be constructed okay. Let us consider uh, the following vectors the last vector is 2 comma 2 comma 0 you can verify that these three vectors uh, form a basis of R3 what is the basis dual to this basis okay let us uh, try to construct that simply using the definition of what the dual basis is we are using uh, b star okay to denote the dual basis so let me say b star has the vectors functionals f1 f2 f3 be the dual basis corresponding to the basis that we started with then uh, we know that uh, by definition this these nine equations must be satisfied by these three functionals f i of uh, u j equals delta i j i j vary from 1 to 3 these nine equations must be satisfied by these functionals using these equations we will determine these functionals but you will see that this is where uh, what we learnt for uh, solving systems of equations will come in handy what are the equations that we need to solve let me write it in full and then write the compressed form and then use what we learnt earlier what this means is for uh, to begin with f1 of u1 is 1 f1 of u2 is 0 f1 of u3 is 0 okay so I have these equations but okay before I write let me also use this observation let me also use this observation that I made uh, the other day um, if you have uh, if you have f as a linear function on R n then f as a representation f of x equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 etc a n x n okay let me use that representation uh, by observing that f element of R4 star R3 star in this example dual uh, space f belongs to this implies that f of x equals let us say alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 plus alpha 3 x 3 where as usual x is in r 3 the notation for x is uh, x 1 x 2 x 3 okay so this was proved first immediately after uh, uh, giving the definition of uh, f linear functional we will make use of this now so these f1 f2 f3 must satisfy these equations where each fy will have certain coefficients okay so let me say for f1 i will use the coefficients alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 that is f1 of x is alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus alpha 3 x3 f2 is another linear functional beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 so alpha beta and then let us say for f3 gamma gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 okay so what is the problem the problem is to determine these nine numbers for instance if I determine the first three numbers I know what f1 is f1 of x is alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus alpha 3 x3 so I need to determine these uh, nine numbers there are nine conditions three into three nine conditions coming from this so there is a unique solution okay okay let us then write down these equations in the light of uh, these representations I have the following f i of u j so I am going to write down f 1 of u 1 this is 1 
f 1 of u 2 is 0, f 1 of u 3 is 0. I am taking first the functional f 1, f 1 goes with the 3 numbers alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. Okay. So, what is f 1 of u 1 on the let me write like this itself f 1 u 1 equals 1 gives me alpha 1 minus alpha 2 equals 1 do you agree f 1 of u 1 u 1 is 1 0 minus 1 what is the okay just to confirm the notation that I am using here is okay, maybe I will go back and write it here this is a general functional for f 1 what does this mean this means f 1 of x is alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2 plus alpha 3 x 3 for f 2 it is beta 1 x 1 f 2 of x is beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 similarly for f 3. So, I am going to determine f 1 of u 1 f 1 of u 2 f 1 of u 3 this is the definition of the dual basis I have just written down the first uh, 3 equations. So, I get alpha 1 minus alpha 2 equals 1 that is the first equation f 1 of u 2 minus alpha 3 yes f 1 of u 2 just sum up alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 that must be 0 f 1 of u 3 the first 2 2 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 0 that is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 0 ok let me write 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 and then uh, um, we can simplify it later this is the system that alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 must satisfy there is a similar system for beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 similar system for gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 ok. In order to solve the system what do we do this is like a x equal to b we need to we need to reduce a to the rho reduced echelon form and uh, probably a will be rho equivalent to i. Now, the dual basis is unique. So, in this case a will be rho equivalent to y in general it may not be, but in this case a dual basis is unique means the solution for this system must be unique a x equal to b has a unique solution uh, square system if and only if a is invertible that is uh, that gives rise to unique solution. So, this will this should be an invertible matrix ok instead of solving all these 3 systems one after the other we would uh, just solve one system and uh, substitute for the right hand sides see it is the same ok what happens to the next system for beta you will again get something like this see for for beta I am determining f 2 for f 2 this is 0 f 2 of u 1 is 0 f 2 of u 2 is 1 f 2 of u 3 is 0. So, that will give me beta 1 minus beta 3 equal to 0 beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3 equals 1 this time 2 beta 1 plus uh, 2 beta 2 equals 0 this must be the system that beta will solve and similarly for gamma the other system is gamma 1 minus gamma 3 equals 0 gamma 1 plus gamma 2 plus gamma 3 equals 0 this time finally the last equation 2 gamma 1 plus 2 gamma 2 equals 1. So, it is essentially the same coefficient matrix A the right hand sides change. So, let us do it uh, more efficiently than solving each of the systems individually. So, I will take the general a general right hand side reduce it to the rho reduced echelon form and then substitute these vectors ok. In other words I consider solving the following uh, system consider so I write on the coefficient matrix 1 uh, 0 minus 1 1 1 1 2 2 0 just the rho vectors that I have here this uh, I want to solve this for a general right hand side this time I will take b 1 b 2 b 3 do elementary row operations reduces to row reduce echelon form where this part will be reduced to the identity matrix then I instead of b 1 b 2 b 3 I will substitute these 3 right hand side vectors to get the solution ok. So, this I need to do elementary row operations from here uh, I get uh, 1 0 minus 1 b 1 will be kept minus this plus this 1 2 b 2 minus b 1 minus 2 times this plus this b 3 minus 2 b 1 please check uh, the calculations here ok. 
okay next step I uh, will keep this as the pivot row uh, I need to make this 0 okay I will keep this as the pivot row so the next step is I get this matrix 0 1 2 b2 minus uh, b1 this uh, will be oh the first row is also kept as it is this will be minus 2 times this plus this minus uh, 4 minus 2 minus 2 times this plus this b3 minus 2 b2 then I will divide throughout by minus 2 the next step then I make uh, these two entries 0. So last row is kept as it is uh, just add these two add these two 2 b 2 okay let me write like this 2 b 1 plus 2 b 2 minus b 3 I need some space I am just adding these two rows to replace the first row then minus 2 times this plus this. still have enough space okay uh, minus 2 times this plus this this will go with a negative sign minus 2 okay what are the calculations minus 2 times this um, minus 2 b2 plus b3 minus 2 times this plus this plus b2 minus b1 is that okay minus uh, 2 b2 uh, minus 2 that becomes plus b3 yeah so that is uh, b, uh, b3 minus b2 minus b1 that is this entry okay so let us now uh, it is clear the this is the rollerdy cycle of this is the identity so the system has a unique solution as we expected let us now determine the solutions alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 for uh, determining alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 the right hand side uh, is the vector 1 0 0 b1 is 1 b2 is uh, 0 b3 is 0 so what is uh, f1 then so let me write f1 right away <coughs> alpha 1 so that is the first vector b1 is 1 so I get a 1 here so it is x1 minus 1 this is 0 so f1 of x is x1 minus x2 that is alpha 1 is 1 alpha 2 is minus 1 alpha 3 is 0 is it clear what uh, I am doing this is for a general right hand side vector b to determine uh, the solution corresponding to this system I will replace the right hand side vector by this vector this is b1 this is b2 this is b3 just substitute there and then uh, these are diagonal entries the first equation gives you x the first equation gives you alpha 1 equals this alpha 2 equals this alpha 3 equals this where b is 1 0 0 okay what happens to the second one second vector 
so b2 so that is again a 1 x1 minus 1 plus 1 is that okay I get a 1 here I get a minus 1 here I get a 1 again so that is f2 f3 corresponding to 0 0 1 0 0 1 minus 1 by 2 minus x1 by 2 0 0 1 minus x2 0 0 1 minus minus x3 by 2 these are the three functionals now you can verify that these uh, three functionals satisfy these nine equations fi uj equals delta ij for instance look at uh, f1 of u1 u1 is uh, 1 0 minus 1 so f1 of u1 is 1 f2 of u1 1 0 minus 1 x1 plus x3 1 and a minus 1 that is 0 f2 of u3 2 2 that is minus 1 plus f3 of I am sorry I am calculating f1 of u1 f1 of u2 f1 of u2 is 1 minus 1 f1 of u3 is 2 minus 2 okay so just to verify so this is uh, one method of doing it okay and uh, we have done it uh, little more efficiently than solving three systems okay this is uh, an example where uh, we have uh, constructed a dual basis compare uh, this with the example that I gave you last time I have given the dual basis first and then I have asked you to find the basis corresponding to which this is the dual basis okay that corresponded to the Lagrange interpolating polynomials for the nodal points T1, T2, T3 okay. Let me move on I want to discuss uh, uh, the following uh, problem a formula which uh, somewhat reminds uh, us of the rank nullity dimension theorem okay we will derive a formula and then uh, look at two corollaries of this formula. So what is the formula before I state this formula let me uh, make the following observation suppose you have uh, dimension of uh, v is n okay so v is a finite dimensional vector space f is uh, a linear functional let us say f is not the 0 functional then what is uh, the rank of f what is the rank of f range of f see f is a function f is a function from v to r r means r over r as a vector space what is uh, the sub uh, look at range of f range of f if f is not 0 is one dimensional so rank is 1 rank of f is 1 if f is not the 0 vector 0 functional then it means that uh, rank of f rank of range of f is a subspace of r okay if it is not 0 then the subspace will be the whole of r and so rank of f equal to 1 if v is finite dimensional then by rank nullity dimension theorem it follows that uh, the nullity of f <coughs> equals n minus 1 okay rank plus nullity is the dimension of the domain space nullity of f is n minus 1 remember that null space uh, nullity of f is what dimension of the null space of f that is n minus 1 null space of f is a subspace of v range of f is a subspace of the codomain null space of f is a subspace of v this subspace has dimension 1 less than the dimension of the whole space such subspaces are called hyperspaces a sub any subspace of v of dimension n minus 1 with dimension n minus 1 
with dimension n minus 1 is called uh, a hyperspace dimension 1 less than the dimension of the original space that is called a hyperspace. So what follows is that if f is a non-zero non linear functional then null space is a hyperspace okay. So f not equal to 0 implies null space of f is a hyperspace hyperspace of v the question is whether the converse is true this is what we will try to answer what is the converse I have a subspace of dimension n minus 1 is there a functional corresponding to this subspace that is is there a functional f such that nulls this uh, subspace is null space of that function is the converse true. what is the converse given a subspace of dimension n minus 1 is there a functional f such that null space of that functional f is equal to this subspace okay we will see that the a little more general question can be answered affirmatively okay. In order to uh, answer this question we need the notion of uh, the annihilator so let me give this definition first the annihilator of uh, a subset of a vector space. to answer this question we need the notion of uh, the annihilator of a subset so let me give this definition let us be a subset of v <coughs> the annihilator of s <coughs> let us uh, denote it by uh, S0 let us denote that by S0 is defined by S0 this is the set of all uh, functionals set of all linear functionals on V set of all linear functions on V that have the property that uh, f of s equal to 0 for all s element of s set of all linear functions on V which take uh, every element in s to the 0 number 0 real number. So this is a subset of V star the annihilator is a subset of V star so it consists of linear functionals it consists of certain linear functionals now uh, it does not matter what s is s0 is always uh, a subspace s0 is a subspace of v star now that is easy to see because uh, if uh, f comma g belong to s0 then uh, I must show that uh, alpha f plus beta g also belongs to s0 but if f comma g belong to s0 then alpha f of s is 0 beta g of s is 0 their sum is 0 f is a linear functional so this is a subspace so s0 is a subspace of uh, v star our interest is in determining the dimension of s0 given uh, v is finite dimensional s0 is a subspace let us look at two extremes for this s0 if uh, s is single term 0 <coughs> what is uh, s0 two extremes I said are you sure all functions all linear functions a linear functional must satisfy the condition that f of 0 is 0 if s is equal to single term 0 then s0 is a whole of uh, v star if s is uh, equal to v then uh, s0 is the 0 functional s0 is a 0 functional okay let us now look at uh, uh, look at 
the dimension of uh, a subspace and the dimension of the annihilator of that subspace they are related and this is a formula that uh, will uh, lead to an affirmative answer for this question for the converse question so I want to uh, prove the following theorem let uh, V be finite dimensional so I will assume dimension of V is N and uh, W be a subspace this time not just a subset subspace of V then the following formula which I told you must remind you of the rank nullity dimension theorem holds look at the dimension of uh, w plus dimension of w naught this is uh, the dimension of uh, uh, v okay now you will see that the proof is also somewhat similar to that uh, theorem okay so remember this uh, this is not a straightforward result because this connects two numbers one for the vector space v the other one for the vector space v star okay so proof let us uh, start with the basis for uh, w let me say I have b equals uh, u1 u2 etc uk let me emphasize that it is a basis for w this be a basis uh, for w so w is k dimensional any basis for that matter any linear independent subset can be extended to a basis of the whole space so I can extend this <coughs> extend uh, bw to a basis uh, for uh, the whole space v v is finite dimensional so let me write bv for a basis uh, for v bv contains bk so it contains the vectors u1 u2 etc uk and also other vectors I will call them uk plus 1 etc un u1 etc un because dimension of v is n this is a basis for v I can construct uh, there is a dual basis for this basis so let uh, b star equal uh, f1 f2 etc fn be the dual basis for uh, the basis bv this is the dual basis what we will show is that um, you kind of remove the first n functionals the remaining n minus k functionals we will show forms a basis for w naught similar to rank nullity dimension theorem the first vectors form a basis for the null space the remaining vectors form a basis for the range space okay so let us now look at fk plus 1 etc fn we want to show that uh, the claim is that these vectors uh, form a these functionals form a basis for w naught see we want to determine the dimension of w naught we will be able to explicitly write down a basis for w naught so uh, this is uh, what uh, we will prove uh, let me just list these functionals fk plus 1 fk plus 2 etc fn these functionals form uh, a basis for uh, w naught this is a claim suppose we have proved this claim then the result follows because the number of functionals here is n minus k there are n minus k functionals so if I have proved that this is a basis then w naught is n minus k dimensional w is k dimensional so k plus n minus k is n so it is enough if we prove this okay let us recall uh, the following uh, formula which was uh, proved uh, in the last lecture uh, proof is as follows proof of the claim uh, 
uh, if I have any functional on V then this uh, any linear functional on V then this linear functional is a linear combination of the dual basis uh, functionals f1 etc fn where the coefficients also can be given explicitly that is f is <coughs> summation i equals 1 to n you look at f of u i and then multiply that with f i f is a linear combination of f1 f2 etc fn because f1 f2 etc fn form uh, uh, the dual basis so any linear functional uh, can be written in terms of those in in addition we also have information on the coefficients the coefficients are uh, f u i okay if okay what is it that we want to show uh, that these vectors form a basis for w naught first of all are these uh, are these functionals in w naught otherwise there is no sense no? are these functionals in w naught what do we mean what do we need to show so let us just keep this uh, aside for a while I want to show that these functionals <coughs> belong to w0 that is these functionals must satisfy the property that they, they take the value 0 for all the points for all the vectors in w okay but look at this what we know is the dual basis satisfies this condition f y u j equals delta i j so if i is see I am looking at functionals from k plus 1 to n so if i is greater than or equal to k plus 1 and <coughs> j is less than or equal to k there is no way these two can become equal so you will get the value 0 so if i is greater than or equal to k plus 1 and j less than or equal to k then f i of u j is 0 <coughs> for all the i and j that satisfy these conditions f i u j has to be 0 in other words is that clear in other words f k plus 1 of u 1 f k plus 1 of u 2 etc f k plus 1 of u k they are all 0 f k plus 2 of u 1 etc f k plus 1 of u k they are all 0 so what is it that we have proved we have proved that these functionals take the you take okay you now take x in w see I want to show f is 0 on w then it follows that if I want to show f is 0 on w I must show that f of x equal to 0 for all x okay look at x belongs to uh, w then uh, x is a linear combination of uh, those basis vectors so let me take some delta 1 uh, uh, u1 etc plus delta n un delta k uk now look at uh, look at f i I am again considering i greater than or equal to k plus 1 I am again considering i greater than or equal to k plus 1 that is let us say f k plus 1 is a functional that we are using now look at f k plus 1 applied to this that will be delta 1 f i of u 1 etc delta k f i of u k but you observe that uh, these scalar uh, these um, uh, uh, super uh, scripts 1 to etc k they are always distinct from k plus 1 and so this has to be 0 and so what is it that I have shown whenever i is greater than or equal to k plus 1 and x belongs to w f i of x is 0 so in the first place these are functionals that belong to w naught these are functionals that take 0 that take the value 0 for any vector in w okay now we need to show that this forms a basis we must show they are linear independent and they span w naught but linear independence is obvious <coughs> because this is just a subset of the dual basis subset of a linearly independent set is independent so linear independence is easy we only need to show that span of these is equal to w0 so we will show that w0 is contained in span of these that is the last step fk plus 1 etc fn 
they are in W naught. So, span of those vectors will again belong to W naught, there is nothing to see. W naught is a subspace, it is only the other way around we need to show. W naught is contained in span of this, okay. Okay, let us now look at this representation. I have written down if uh, f belongs to V star, then uh, f equals uh, i equals 1 to n, f of uh, ui fi. W naught is uh, a subset of V star. So W naught consists of functionals. W naught consists of linear function. Let's remember. So if f belongs to W naught, if f belongs to W naught, that is what I want to show is f belongs to W naught implies f is a linear combination of these functionals. So let f belong to W naught. This means what? Then uh, uh, W naught is an annihilator. Uh, of w so any f will take the value 0 for anything in w so f of u1 f of u2 etc f of uk all these must be 0 because u1 u2 etc uk belong to w w naught is a set of all functionals that take every vector in w to 0 in particular that must take the basis vectors to 0 so if f is in w naught then these are 0 go back to this equation so f belongs to w naught implies this representation has n terms but if f belongs to w naught the first uh, k terms are 0 so there are uh, only n minus k terms summation i equals k plus 1 to n f of ui f5 forget about these numbers this f is a linear combination of fk plus 1 etc fn which is what we wanted to prove this belongs to span of fk plus 1 etc fn okay so what we have done is we have shown that if f belongs to w naught then f is in the span of this so that proves this part and so it follows that uh, if we go back this claim has been proved and so it follows that w dimension w plus dimension w naught is n okay w is k that is a dimension of uh, w dimension w naught is n minus k which we proved just now that is n that is a dimension of v. Okay, let me stop you.